Yes, eTwinning is a platform that was being created by the EU to encourage staff from educational establishments from across Europe to work together collaboratively online. Um, it's a partner finding network where you can find like minding educators to work together on a range of projects of any length. So you could have a project um, that lasted for a day or an hour, or you could have a project that spanned across a whole academic year. And any academic institution can sign up for eTwinning, ranging from um, nursery age pupils right through to higher educational establishments. And I know that there are some um, PGCE courses that are running um, eTwinning projects at the moment as well. Um, so once you've found a partner through the Partner Finding Forum and decided that you're going to work with um, somebody, you register pro your project and once your project's registered you're provided with a twin space where you and your partners can communicate and collaborate securely so you don't need to worry about putting information out there that you don't want everybody else to see or um, you could put pictures of pupils who are taking part in the project and that kind of thing because the only people who can get into the twin space are people who you as the project leader have Orchid to get into the twin space and it works a little bit like um, a virtual learning environment so you can upload files, you can um, email between partners um, and many people use the twin space to support their online projects so they don't necessarily use it as the only tool for the project, they also use other ICT tools along I decided to get involved in eTwinning um, because as an MSL teacher it's really difficult to get your pupils having contact with native speakers of the languages that you're teaching. Really the only way to do it previously had been through um, trips abroad, doing exchanges and all of those things can be very very time consuming to organise and although we, we still do do those things because real experiences um, are essential for pupils, being able to do e-twinning and have our pupils in touch with people who are French speakers or who are German speakers was absolutely amazing for them because they didn't have to leave the classroom in order to find out that the languages that they're learning were real um, and it just kind of snowballed from there really that um, pupils were able to talk to target language speakers and learn from them and also help them to learn as well. So we have, we've had projects in the past where pupils uh, would have a conversation over a weekend, for example, and they're saying, oh, we've got a test on Monday. How do you say this in French? And the French partners were helping them to find out how to say those things so that, so that they could improve the French. And so really, it was just my way of being able to get my pupils in touch with people who speak the language that they're learning but it's led to much more than that because they also now um, have had contact with people who are learning the language that they're learning so they haven't necessarily worked with French pupils but they've worked with Polish pupils who are learning French, Spanish pupils who are learning French and it's been really good for them to see that people in other countries do learn the same languages as them and have similar experiences to them and that they also make the same mistakes or even get the same things right. Over the years, we've used a variety of different tools to enable our pupils to connect. So one of the easiest ways to connect through eTwinning is via the twin space, which I talked about earlier. So pupils can email each other within the twin space. And the twin space also provides a chat room where pupils can go and actually chat. And one of the projects that I was involved in was for the European Day of Languages a few years ago. And we just had an hour slot and there were five, six, seven schools all involved. And the pupils went into the chat room and um, talked to each other at the same time um, just by a typing rather than by a talk, by a video conference. Um, but they were able to get immediate feedback on what they were saying and also um, give immediate feedback to the things that they heard. Um, other technologies that we've used um, that have been successful have been blogging platforms. Um, one of my most successful projects was a blog between myself and a school in France 
where people shared um, things that they've created and then commented and discussed via the comments at the end of each post what had been uh, um, put onto the blog. Also, um, within that project, we created podcasts so that they could hear each other speaking the target language and improve the listening skills and um, making presentations and uploading those online, making Volki so that they could, um, again, improving accents but also giving them a little bit more engagement because they could create a little avatar for themselves. Um, and also we've created wikis in the past which is a little bit more um, of a stationary website I suppose and we used that for a project which um, we did for the Travelling Bear which I'll talk about in a little bit more detail um, later on and that was more, he kept a diary of every country that he went to so the wiki was used to upload those kind of things and we've also uploaded videos to the wiki in the past as well. Um, so there's the scope within eTwinning really to use any um, technologies that you want to use that are available to you. The first project that I ever did was a blogging project with France called Je Blog, Tu Blog, Let's Blog. And I can't take credit for the name. I think our French teacher, French partner came up with that name. And um, it was a blogging project where pupils in France and my pupils in the UK um, created presentations, podcasts, and the teachers uploaded them onto the blog. And then they could comment on one another's work. And the thing that really made it successful was that the pupils really got into this and used the comments at the end of the post to communicate with each other and quite freely and not just in school time but by their own choices. Um, another thing I think that made it successful was just that because it was the novelty of being able to have the work put online, have the work seen by other people and have the work appreciated by other people as well so it wasn't just me their teacher having a look at what was being done but they were actually creating the work for somebody else who they knew would look at it who was in another country so it wasn't just um, successful educationally within our two establishments but it was also um, socially very successful as well for those pupils and um, another project that we had which was successful was um, Michel Le Voyageur who was a little bear and he went um, travelling around Europe. He went to two schools in Romania, he went to Spain, he went to Poland, um, he went to uh, Tobamari um, and he kept a diary so the, the schools where he went took pictures of what he did. He collected things as he went so he's now sat in my classroom and he has a little badge from Romania and he has um, something else from Poland and something else from Spain and one of the things that was very successful about that was that the pupils at my school who were involved in that, they were able to take the diary entries that he had and turn them into something in the target language so we've been doing a lot of work in the perfect tense so my pupils put together their own kind of little diary in the perfect tense about what he did and we've got a nice display up in school now um, in the department of um, the, showing the countries he went to and the things that he did whilst in those countries. So our pupils learnt a lot about Europe um, and it was really interesting every so often when we would have a look at where he was to see the pupils' reactions wow, is that what the dress like there? Oh, they're all the wear school uniform in Turkey. Oh, I didn't know that. Look at the size of the classes that there that the are in Turkey. And it was interesting because I worked with year eight pupils and I was a little bit worried that they might think that having a bear was a bit babyish. But he went to um, nursery schools where they loved him. But he also went to um, some sixth forms. And <laughs> the interesting thing was, that at the sixth form he seemed to have had more fun than he did in some of the other places. He, went, he played in a band, he um, did some gymnastics classes, he um, took part in a traditional day where the pupils wore traditional costumes and again it was really fascinating for my pupils to see um, just how young people all over the world react to and engage with something that's seemingly as childish as um, a teddy bear. And a 
benefits that um, I found have been absolutely huge. Um, improved knowledge of the target language, obviously, for those projects where we've worked in French or in German, um, because the pupils have been cu more curious about the target language as well, and also finding out more about the culture of target language countries. I think it's really important that as language teachers, we don't just see ourselves as we're there to teach French or we're there to teach German. I think it's important um, that we let our pupils find out about the countries where languages are spoken and can widen the knowledge of the world um, in that way. So obviously through e-training projects that has um, improved. Motivation of the pupils, the excitement when we're working on part of a project and, and what the pupils want to put into it is just um, so much more than sometimes if you were to say to them, write me a paragraph about what you did last weekend. Um, whereas if they're writing for somebody else, they just want to make sure that it's absolutely perfect and absolutely spot on. And I've just recently I'm working on a project on school with France and I was working with my year eights again. One of the girls said, she said, Miss, I'm strangely very excited about this piece of work. <laughs> and I just thought that really um, encapsulated everything about why bother about doing it because you don't see that every day. But also the pupils get um, transferable skills as well, those really important ICT skills that they need in everyday life, communication skills that they need in everyday life, being able to talk to other people, being able to listen to other people, being able to write in different um, registers and talking to other people and thinking about the language that they're using and uh, arousing the curiosity. And I think another big thing was busting stereotypes. It's very easy for the pupils to go away with a kind of impression that um, all people who live in France are like this. To be able to actually meet these people virtually and find out that in actual fact not all French people um, wear stripy tops and berries um, and eat frogs legs and snails is a very powerful thing, I think. So um, the benefits are just absolutely amazing from my point of view um, when the pupils really do get into these projects.